Hey, um, what's up everyone? Um, you know who I am, but finally I have my uh, beautiful and beloved wife, Nicole, um, with me in a video. We've been talking about doing this for some time now. And uh, we, I guess the hesitancy for posting, I guess the video was like we wanted to be like we were all together, perfect. Our marriage was just cool. When our marriage get perfect, we'll make the video so other people could follow us. Yeah, and then we found that we were never able to make the video. <laughs> That's why we didn't make the video. That's why. And, you know, the Holy Spirit told us, say, hey, it's not people tired of seeing the fluff. They want to see the real. And just like us, we want to see people who um, go through the test of fire and make it. And so what you see in us, um, the pictures and the posts, that came through years of being in the Lord's crucible. Uh, purifying or uh, getting out of us the impurities that didn't make our marriage uh, a great representation of him. Never forget the time we were at church and it was a group of maybe 30 couples mm -hmm. and um, the pastor was leading the group. He asked how many of the couples were actively seeking counseling. Mm -hmm. And Nicole and I were the only couple to raise our hands. Mm -hmm. And that was alarming to him. And as a man, um, you know, talking to so many men like, man, I got to get out the house. I'm not used to this. Mm -hmm. And the biggest issue is, you know, we're not used to sitting with our own thoughts. We're not used to mm -hmm. taking that time out to identify the why to our reactions or responses. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, many people want peace so much that they sweep the issues under the rug. And now you're wondering why you're arguing more than before because you you didn't put in the work needed to keep you from sweeping the debris up under the rug. And um, over time, um, we just really, 2015, as I shared in my book, Cry Like a Man, we were considering separation. Mm -hmm. And we loved each other, no infidelity, no gambling issues, no uh, uh, physical abuse, nothing. Yeah. It was just a just hard talk, the memories, the negative uh, um, communication, yeah. subconscious wounds, huh? Yeah. They were just there. And um, I guess, you know, I guess the whole theme around what we want to share um, in the little time that we have is how to communicate during the coronavirus pandemic yeah. when you're locked in. And the scripture we both um, were in agreement upon is James uh, chapter 1, verse 9, where it reads, this you know, my beloved, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Mm -hmm. Again, but everyone must be quick to hear or quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Mm -hmm. With us, what would you say, I guess, the biggest, what would be like your number one advice for couples who are like just being around each other, they're arguing, a lot of things are coming out, and they're on edge, what would you say that we've used, like a principle in our relationship that helps us understand each other? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I would say the first is uninterruption. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's hard, the, the art of not listening to respond. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hard. Yeah. We still don't have that down yeah. 100%, yeah. but we yeah. at least do, do yeah. try. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm, I'm going to write this down because right. I got something for what you just said, but keep talking. Oh, I'm, listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm <laughs> listening. But I'm writing it down, though, because I'm going to forget. But I'm going to write this down. But yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. number one. Um, because when you listen with a heart for understanding, mm -hmm. Um, and listen to hear the heart of your beloved, you know, to hear their heart. Um, immediately that defense mechanism breaks down. So listening to hear the heart mm -hmm. of your beloved, not yeah. to respond. That's really good because a lot of men um, want to be, you know, share their emotions or how they truly feel with their wives or significant other. And we hold back because, you know, a lot of times when we're discussing, it seems like, you know, how we used to be, you would use my emotions against me. For me, fellas, what it took, um, I got tired of holding on to 
what I was feeling. Like mm -hmm. I got tired of only being able to express myself through anger. Like mm -hmm. that was the only emotion I knew how to express my frustration through. Mm -hmm. And then I started broadening that when I became more comprehensive and started sharing the deeper emotions, the hurt, the bringing up, man, it makes me feel like uh, uh, it's dismissive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, when I start sharing that with you, that side of me, how did that affect you? And then I would like for you just to share from a wife's perspective. Um, initially, it was like, this is no, what is this? Is this a trap? <laughs> um, That's good. But I, I started becoming more careful because I knew in my response mm -hmm. to you, because I knew that it was a vulnerable place and space. And I also knew that if I, if I messed that up, there was no mm. opening that back up. Mm. Um, and so I was, um, one, I, I, I think I was honored that my husband was trusting me on with himself so vulnerably and emotionally um, it wasn't what I necessarily saw um, growing up and through society, mm -hmm. you know, um, and so you showing yourself that way to me, um, being vulnerable and saying, no, this hurt me or, you know, being so communicative because, you know, used to men just being like, you know, forget it or, right. you know, just on, on the shutdown tip. And so um, realizing that, you know, I had the, I don't want to say power, that's too strong of a word, but I could have emotionally hurt you in those moments um, was a big responsibility mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one that I didn't, um, thank God, take, take lightly. What do you say to wives who desire um, to have that type of access to their husband's hearts? What do you, how can they cultivate it? Because it was a, I mean, it was a challenge for both of us, but for you, like you say, it's, it's a culture shift because you didn't see that growing up. Mm -hmm. How can a wife cultivate that? Because you do, you didn't want to use the word power, but you have a great influence. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's really strong. So yeah. what would you, you know, suggest for wives to do in that regard? Um, I would say to never put your husband, your man, your boyfriend, your partner, never put them down never ever put them down for being emotionally vulnerable mm -hmm. um it's funny that you know women um i'll speak for myself growing up um we want the man that's sweet and kind to us and romantic um but a lot of us we want that that little bit of roughness, that little bit of thug, Tell that little thing, bit yeah. of, you know, you know, well, if I'm out with him, he ain't gonna be no punk, you know. I had that in you, like I felt completely safe and, you know, you certainly were no kind of punks. Mm -hmm. um, but the minute that, you know, the man becomes vulnerable or emotional. It's like, oh, this nigga, you know. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to keep that. Too. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's good. That's real. No. Good. Don't put that. Uh, you, know, you, you know, he a little weak. He a little, you know, he's soft. Don't be soft. The minute you do that, you can just forget about it. You've lost the battle. Respect their emotions. Mm. Uh, a man that can express his emotions is a more stable man he's going to be a more stable husband he's going to be a more stable father mm -hmm. he's going to be more stable in his workplace as, and which is going to make him a more stable provider for your home mm -hmm. like far as focusing on the communi communication i like to say from a man's standpoint um a, 
a lot of times we shut our women down, mm -hmm. you know, um, just to be, you know, transparent. Um, you know, I would, I was negative a lot early on in our marriage, condemning, like, you know, even to this day, I have to be careful with what I say. Again, slow to speak, you know, and listen to your heart. And once we figured out that piece, that was major in communication. So that what I would say number two is knowing each other's intent. Like mm -hmm. for me as, a, as, as men, as men in general, we, we hold back because we think they trying to, again, culturally has taught us not to trust you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I'm married to someone that I don't trust, there can't really be open communication. Mm -hmm. When I start listening to Nicole, listening to her heart and knowing her intent, the arguments decreased greatly. Mm -hmm. Once I said, wait a minute, she loves me, so she wouldn't be saying this to deliberately hurt me mm -hmm. or demean me or condemn me. There's something behind what my wife is saying, and I need to listen to her heart right now. Mm -hmm. Knowing each other's intent, especially in these times where you can't get out and mm -hmm. go uh, hang out at the bar, whatever you right. do to release this stress, um, is knowing that whatever is said that may have irritated you, mm -hmm. knowing that the, what was said was based in love, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Intent is uh, can be in the eye of the beholder, though, because mm -hmm. intent goes hand in hand with trust, because there could be a lot of hurt built up over the years um, that block you from doing that. I think couples have to make the decision, Jay, and we literally had to make a decision to trust one another's intent. That's real. I'm going to trust that you love me and your intent is not to harm me. Is there any examples we can give, like how we had to apply that tool? Can you think of anything? I can't remember what I was thinking. What have I said? I say a lot of things that make you mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, let me think. Do, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. Mm -hmm. So this morning, you know, I was expressing my heart to you about, you know, some faith issues mm -hmm. that I was having during this time. And I think you made the comment about something like, you know, um, well, you just have to, you know, at, at some point you just have to apply it. You just mm -hmm. have to apply what you know. But I knew that your intent, I decided to know that your intent was Say not to, again. I decided to know mm -hmm. that your intent was not to judge me. It wasn't to hurt me or to put me down. Mm -hmm. But because of just so many triggers, like our counselors called us one day, he says, man, you two are trigger happy. And we, we, we you know, you say something, <laughs> busting the cap back at you. But I didn't hear your heart and I almost lost our marriage because of that. And number three, uh, we would say is what? Space. We're all kind of used to having our own space, our own time um, outside of our spouse's time, you know, mm. when we're normally at work or doing things throughout the day. I, I can speak from the man's uh, viewpoint, especially men who aren't um, comprehensive or used to expressing how they feel, um, we need time to just be alone. A lot of times when I talk to my friends, they just want to just get a break and their wives take it as them not wanting to be around them. Mm -hmm. Can you unpack that? Like as a man, I would want to know like, cause we don't understand like, well, I just need a moment. You know, I haven't, I've been here all day, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you want me to be here 28 hours a day? <laughs> you know what I mean? So can you unpack so we understand what our wives are saying to us, you know, like, because sometimes it doesn't like, man, it's, it's only 24 hours, Cole. I mean, I can't give you 25. So how do you, how can you help uh, us with that? that? It goes back to heart intent. You mm -hmm. know, uh, don't nobody want to be around you unless they want to be around you. 
<laughs> unless they want your company, unless right. you, they get something from that, mm -hmm. right? Okay. It's filling up a heart need. It's filling up a soul need, you know? One is, again, trusting heart intent. It's not that my husband um, doesn't want to be near me or doesn't want to spend time with me. My husband needs time with his own thoughts. He needs time with his own concerns, worries, to be able to process, to be able to, right? The opposite where they, you know, where more so we would think maybe a man needs his space or he, you know, there's there are women like that as well that is that you know they don't they need their space mm -hmm. um and so um and then on top of that you've got work responsibilities and so you know you got somebody you know like hey and you're in the and middle you're still of a working yeah, conference, conference call, call. <laughs> so she'll be on a conference call and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, I, I'm talking. You can push mute and tell them all. Literally. I, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm the CEO. Tell them, tell, them, tell them, push mute, tell them, hold on, in the middle of a conference call. So, again, uh, real quick over the three. Number one? Um, to listen yeah. to the yeah. heart, yeah. not listen to respond. Good. Number two was trusting each other's intent for each other. Yes. And number three is giving each other space. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, spiritually, if we were all we needed for just our existence, we would never need the most high. Yeah. So we would never be able to fill each other cups completely anyway. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we would like to close with this scripture. as Proverbs ten nineteen: When words are many, sin is unavoidable. But he or she who restrains his or her lips is wise. The less we speak and the more we listen, the better we'll communicate. And the better opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak his truth. That's good to end on. That's it. Um, so we close in prayer. Um, 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 Father God, we just come to you just thanking you for this opportunity to use technology to encourage and edify marriages, relationships in you. We pray, uh, Abba, that you would please um, keep our enemy Satan at bay. The demons he deployed and the third of the angels that fell with him, Father, that desire to see every marriage, every relationship that is trying to center itself around you. Please, Abba, deal with them ever so severely because you get the greatest glory from marriages, from families. And we just uh, ask for your protection. Then also we ask for your counsel via your Holy Spirit that we would not respond in our flesh or soulish, that we would learn how to wean our souls so that we can walk by your Spirit. Yes. In the name of Yeshua, we just pray for every marriage that is struggling right now, um, please, Abba, give them the strength needed, the patience, the compassion to overcome these difficult times. We know, Father, that um, you get so much glory from when two become one. Never let anyone separate what you have ordained. Again, we just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for um, just the trials and tests that turned our marriage into something that could reflect your love. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua, we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen.